Click into the text element, double click right here, copy and paste text from my notes, go to the next text element, double click right here, copy and paste text from my notes, go to the next text element, double click right here, copy and paste text from my notes and do it all over again. <sighs> all this repetitive mindless work, it's so boring. But what if I tell you it does not have to be like that? Do you want to have somebody to do this boring work for you? Well, I might have the solution for you. And it comes in the form of a repository called RobotGo. Ready to automate your life? Then let's go! So what is this magic called RobotGo? It is a Go package that lets you control your mouse, keyboard, window, so basically your whole computer with code. You can even use it to open a new browser window, go to a YouTube channel that I picked absolutely at random and then click the subscribe button. And all of that by running go run main .go from your terminal. Now let's go ahead and see how RobotGo works. The very first thing we need to do is to install RobotGo. And if you take a look at the repository, you can see that it has a few requirements we need to take care of, depending on our operating system. Since I'm working with a Mac, I need to install Xcode Select, which I've already done. But depending on whatever you are working with, you might need to install some more things. After you've done that, the installation process is pretty straightforward. All you need to do is to fire up your terminal and type in the following. Go get github.com slash go dash vgo slash robotgo. And of course press enter and let the magic happen. This will download robotgo and all its dependencies. Alright, but there is one more thing you need to do if you want to use RobotGo. You need to give Visual Studio Code or whatever code editor you're using access to your computer. On Mac, you can do that by going to your System Preferences, Security and Privacy and then make sure that the checkbox for Visual Studio Code is checked. Otherwise, the code will not work and you won't see anything. Alrighty, now that everything is in place, let's get coding. As you can see, I'm starting with a completely empty project. So before we can get started, we need to import RobotGo in our main file so we can use it in our code. The very first thing I would like to show you is how you get the current position of your mouse. This is especially useful if you want to find out the coordinates of your mouse on your screen, in case you want to move it to a specific position. This is something I use all the time, so I will start with that. Let's go ahead and write a new function for that and call it current mouse position. The first thing we need to do is to use the RobotGo package and then call the getMousePosition function from it. This returns to integer values which represent the current mouse position on your screen in terms of x and y values. Let me quickly print out this function call so you can see how this looks like. Of course, we need to call the current mouse position function and then run the code. See, two values get printed out. The first one for the value on the x-axis and the second one for the value on the y-axis. Let's go ahead and put this into an infinite loop. This way we can get the current values in real time. Okay, maybe this is a little fast. We should wait a few milliseconds before retrieving the next position. Of course, we can use the time sleep function for that. But RobotGo already has some built-in convenience functions that we can use. If I type in sleep, you can see that we can choose between sleep, which sleeps in seconds, micro sleep, which sleeps in microseconds, and millisleep, which of course lets the process sleep in milliseconds. For this example, I'm going to use the millisleep function and let the process sleep for 200 milliseconds. Now let's run the code again. The numbers now come a little slower, which is totally fine. One thing I would like to mention is that the further I move my mouse to the right, the higher the x value gets, but if I move my mouse further up, the value for the y axis is lowering. Just for you to know. Now let's go ahead and get some coordinates. For example, let's hover over the current mouse position function and try to remember the values, roughly 340 and 380. Ok, now let's stop the main function and let's do some shenanigans with that. For instance, we can use the move function to move the mouse to a given position. First, we need to comment out this function, otherwise it will block all consecutive code. Now, again, let's create a new function called copy and paste and move the mouse to a given location on the screen. The function name might already tell you what this function will end up doing, so yeah, I gave away the surprise. Anyhow, before I run the code, see that I start with my mouse down here at the bottom. But if I run the code and wait a second, you can see that it appeared right here over the current mouse function call. But moving the mouse is not the only thing that you can do. You can also use RobotGo to click. For instance, let's double click onto the current mouse position to select it. But first, we need to normal click into the window to focus it. We can do both of this by calling the click function which has two parameters. The first one is the button you want to press in a string representation and the second one is a boolean value which tells RobotGo to double click or not. In our case, we first want to regular left click and then double click. If I run the code, let's see what happens. Hmm. 
It does not select the word like it's supposed to. But why is that? Well, that is because the move function and the two consecutive clicks are happening too fast. We need to wait for the move function to finish before we can go ahead and call the click function. And the same is true for the single click and the double click functions. We need to wait here as well. Okay, let's be honest right now. We only have three function calls and already two sleep calls. Can you imagine how many sleep calls we might have if the number of functions increases? This would totally clutter up our code. Well, the good thing is, Robot Go has the answer to this problem. There is a specific field we can set called mouse sleep, which lets robot go sleep after every single mouse function call. Let's set it to 100, which means it should sleep for 100 milliseconds. And see what happens if I run the code again. Awesome, it selects the current mouse position function exactly how it's supposed to. Now that we have seen how to move the mouse, let's go ahead and interact with the keyboard. If you just want to press a few buttons, you can use the key tab function. If I pass an A to the function, I would think that after selecting the current mouse position function, it would replace the word and simply type an A. Let's run the code and see if this is actually the case. Well, it is. Now, a more common way is to use some sort of key combinations, like for example command C and command V to copy and paste code. So let's do that. In order to copy the selection, we need to press both the command button as well as the C button. So let's pass in both of these as separate strings. Even though this looks totally fine, this will not work. If we hover over the key tab function, you can see that it expects the, let's call it regular button first, and keys like command or control as arguments. So we need to switch the order of C and command. The next thing we need to do is to move the mouse a little to the right and call the key tab function again. This time though, in order to paste the code, using the V key. Running the code now shows us that, well, that we made a mistake. The good thing is that that mistake is something that happened to me all the time when I was coding my first few automations. We actually forgot one very important step, and that is to click the mouse after we move it to the right and before we paste from the clipboard. So to fix our problem, all we need to do is to put a click between the movement of the mouse and the key tab function. And there you go, we pasted our function name. Keep the single click in between these function calls in mind. This is something that has caused me a lot of headaches. Now, you can use more than just the key tab function to interact with your keyboard. If I type in key, you can see that I get more options like key down, key up or key press. Depending on what you want to accomplish, you sometimes want to use other functions instead of key tab. Another thing that I would like to draw your attention to is that, same as for mouse sleep, there is also a key sleep option that you can set if you want to wait after each of your key function executions. Now, pressing single keys is something that you need a lot, but another common use case is to write text, and calling key tab functions over and over again to press every single key would be extremely cumbersome. The good thing is though that Robot Go has something up its sleeves. First, let's comment out the copy and paste function call and create a new function called write text. In here, we can use the type string function to write complete strings, for instance hello world. But we also need to move the mouse to the same position as before and click into the window to gain focus. Now, if you run the code, you can see that the string hello world magically appears. Okay, basically you can do all kinds of shenanigans right now. You can even go as far and write code that writes you code. And that is just the beginning. With only these simple things you just learned, you can go ahead and create a new file, name it and paste code into it. Or copy and paste code from Stack Overflow. Or go ahead and visit this specific website and press the subscribe button. Or solve the exact problem that I had and write all the captions for your TikTok videos in Premiere Pro with code. Now that you have seen what you can do with only using your mouse and keyboard, I'm glad to tell you that we barely scratched the surface of what Robot Go can do. You can open and close windows, listen to specific keyboard shortcuts, take pictures of your screen and store them as pictures, and even get process IDs and kill them. If you want to see an in-depth tutorial about Robot Go, let me know in the comments down below. And of course, give this video a like. Now go ahead and automate your life with code. And until next time, keep on coding.